Good morning, folks. We've got coverage of numerous top stories in severe weather, earthquakes, and science news. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star exceedingly quiet. Sunspots departed. Sparse coronal holes on the south, but really just a quiet sun, nothing else in the forecast today. And quiet geospace as solar wind is dropping intensity with fewer, colder particles flowing more slowly. Geomagnetic conditions are quiet, silent, and staying put. Most activity on our star right now is the arching plasma filaments in the corona. They are just pretty, 5 to 30 Earths in size. Let's start off Earth news pretty as well. Day visible fireball here on a near straight in trajectory in Canada. Had the sun bid down, it would have lit up the entire sky. Speaking of lighting up the sky, this is the GO-16 lightning overlay. That pretty much tells the story of what happened in the central states last night and what's coming with the storm system again tonight slightly further to the east. Brutal energy feeding into that storm and its potential is being realized. Damage of the hardest hit areas is wiping homes off the map. Please eyes open again today and tonight. Let's go to the science news and start off good there. The UK National Grid vulnerability to solar storms is finally being given the studies it deserves. The UK specifically has lagged a bit behind the US, New Zealand, and Scandinavia in that regard. Part of the solar storm process is erosion of the plasma sphere, turns out to be caused by the penetrating electric fields. Those fields play directly into the global electric circuit, which is how the sun has access to the entire atmospheric column and to the crust. And on that note, the studies on the global electric circuit are starting to exceed my own geophysical backstudy, and that's a good thing. They are taking this very seriously. Big quake of the last day rang in at 6.8 and was downgraded as wildly as I've ever seen a quake downgraded to 6.3. There is a paper out about pre-seismic signals today, but this is again focusing on the ULF and VLF tracking. Vast majority of the useful pre-seismic factors show up in the weather and the low-velocity zone earthquakes as well. You can learn more about that at quakewatch.net, and I highly recommend it because a lot of folks got that one predicted last night. Let's go and revisit this ESA animation of the Hadley feral and polar cells of the atmosphere. Hadley are the tropical ones, the most important, and have repeatedly been shown to be forced in various ways by space weather. Let's add one to the list, the broadening of that tropical zone, determined here to be mostly the result of natural variability, which is, of course, science code for solar forcing. We'll end with cosmology. For those who don't know, the most popular sought form of dark matter is a supersymmetric particle called a WIMP. And there is no supersymmetry. All searches and predictions have failed. It was once a promising paradigm, mathematically beautiful, told us where to look for dark matter. Coincidence that we can't find it or supersymmetry alleged to underlie it? Probably not. They're still looking. Well, if you want some real dark matter, that which is not dusty plasma in the cosmos is likely machos or smachos, both massive and small compact halo objects. But this is going to require some magnification. No doubt, they cannot be the whole of the missing mass, but with the extra red dwarfs, rogue planets, and potentially smaller objects as well, no doubt cosmologists have written out the compact halo objects well before they're due. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Severe storms again tonight in the USA. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.